climbing an old abandoned military bunker ladder with one hand. Probably not recommended. Good afternoon, everybody. Wes Davids here. Welcome to windy, cold, yet beautiful Penghu. I'm here at San Shui Beach. I'm braving the elements here to bring you this video today. I hope you like it. I'm going to be exploring whatever I can here. Anything old, anything abandoned, and I think around here, basically anything with a military history to it. So let's get to it before I freeze my fingers off. So Penghu actually does have a very interesting history. When the KMT came over from China, you know, after the Second World War and set up shop on the island of Taiwan, they used Penghu and some of the outlying islands such as Jinmen and Mazu as kind of uh, a protection against the mainland Communist Chinese Party. Because obviously those islands, those outer islands, especially Penghu, that is kind of the outer defense region of Taiwan. So that's why when you come to islands like this, if you look hard enough you can actually see all kinds of ancient relics from Taiwan's military past. Just down the hill from the lookout point up there I'm sure they would have stationed troops there looking out across the ocean across the beach but I've come down the hill and I see a sign up here that says military buildings 20 meters let's go check that out. I guess in a way this is kind of urban exploration just finding old abandoned buildings, old sites like this, and then exploring, just imagining the lives that people would have lived here so long ago, decades ago. And this is kind of what I was talking about here. Uh, this is the San Shui Beach, which I showed you just down there. And you can see there's all kinds of military craft and soldiers and fortifications that were set up all along the beach. Uh, obviously, judging by the quality of the picture, uh, a very long time ago, many, many decades ago probably right after uh, World War II even, maybe the 60s and 70s. And I really love how the Penghu government has actually taken the time to set up these, these old memorials to the days long past of Penghu's military. Back in the day, obviously, they were probably a lot more worried about a Chinese invasion. As far as I know, as I said, the Chinese never attempted to take Penghu. But I wonder these days, uh, with everything that's been going on politically between Taiwan and China. I wonder if some of these fears are starting to creep back in to the mindset of the Taiwanese military these days. And I wonder if Penghu will actually become less and less of a tropical sunny paradise tourist vacation and more of a strategic military zone. Obviously very scary, but also a little bit exciting to be living in Taiwan or even Asia at a time like this when tensions are quite high because it feels like we can be a part of whatever is going on here or whatever will happen and obviously <laughs> I know by talking to my foreigner friends here we're all we're all super willing to support Taiwan and stand by Taiwan's side just in case anything like that does happen but I just wanted to say as I'm exploring these old military buildings here uh, this is one great thing about living in Taiwan is the history is still very very much alive here on the island and in the outer islands of Taiwan. Just look where I am now. This is not a tourist spot. This is literally an old abandoned uh, military barracks or fortifications. They probably would have had their rifles set up right here, aimed out across the water, just in case any invaders decided to try to sneak up on Penghu. So I really love this exploring these old aspects of Taiwan. And it's all right here for you to see, which I think is really cool. They haven't bulldozed it. They haven't closed off these buildings. People are just invited to come here and learn about the fascinating history of Taiwan. All right, I just found these steps here and I think they probably would have had little trails like this, probably to go down to the, the water, do a little fishing on their days off, maybe catch some lunch. And obviously Penghu is full of amazing seafood. Yeah, be careful on these stairs, I think. I guess one thing you should be aware of is these stairs are not really stairs. It's more like a glorified ladder here. But this is what I love about coming to places like this 
in the winter time, you get kind of a, a feeling that you don't get in the hot summer months. In the summer, you're just trying not to bake, trying not to get sunburn, trying not to sweat. So I really love the fact that I can come here by the ocean and wear gloves and hats and jackets and then go explore things that probably in the summertime I wouldn't really think about exploring. In the summer, we just sit on San Shui Beach and enjoy the sunshine and the water. But today, obviously, it's too windy, it's too cold, so I'm forced to step out of what I usually do and maybe learn about some of the history here on the island and explore places like this. Anyway, I just wanted to show you the famous Penghu cactus. They're all growing right along the rocks here, right along the water. So you could imagine maybe the soldiers might have snuck down these rocks, grabbed a couple of these beautiful purple flowers and ate them for dessert or used them to flavor their drinks, something like that. But whatever you do, be careful. I just got nailed in the lake. Ouch. So I'm not entirely sure what this structure used to be. It's either an old military bunker or somebody's old house. But actually, now that I look at it, you kind of see those two holes there where they would have been pointing their machine guns over the water. Wow, it's very, very cool. Maybe a little bit dangerous up here because pretty far drop down to the ocean. All right, gonna head back up. I know on the way up here, I saw something that I really, really want to explore. Actually, two things, let's go. I actually do have some pretty big news, pretty exciting news regarding my life and Penghu. But unfortunately, you're going to have to wait until next week's video to hear more about that. In the meantime, I think I'm going to share the news a little bit early on my YouTube membership only page. So I've just set this up a couple of weeks ago. It's 75 NT a month and you can choose to join. Just press the join button right down below this video. And I'm gonna be posting all kinds of exclusive content like exclusive pictures and early access to my videos and private chats with my members and all the proceeds that I make from the private membership YouTube channel of mine will go directly back into making my videos better. So I wanna save up for a new camera, a new lens, new microphones, new lights. These things don't come cheap. So I just thought having a little private membership area on my page, this would be a great way for me to interact with my viewers on a more personal level. So hopefully that would be kind of a win-win for everyone involved. Anyway, check this out. I'm gonna go explore this military tunnel down here. I should probably take off my bag first. There are no signs that say we're not allowed to be here. So as far as I know, this is all completely legal. Let's go check it out. Oh, cool. So for some reason, last time I came to Shan Shui, this area, I never saw this place. I wonder if they just opened this up because you can tell these are all new pipes, new lights. So I'm, I'm curious, maybe this was all blocked off before because this is the first time that I've been down here. This is awesome. All right, this is the kind of stuff I absolutely love, exploring these ancient military caverns down here. I actually hope it's not too big. I don't want to get lost. And the red light on my camera is flashing. I am almost out of battery and I left my camera bag way up at the entrance to this military tunnel. So let's see how far we can get before I run out of battery. Whoa. So actually it just keeps going. It keeps going. I would assume that these tunnels were actually used as kind of an escape method just in case the enemy got too close. They could hop back into these secret military tunnels and retreat and perhaps get to a safer place or the next bunker over and yeah so you can see there there are actually these exits uh, periodically this is really awesome i've never been in anything like this in taiwan maybe in jinmen but of course they were storing the gallium dough down in those military bunkers looks like we've reached the end of the road here just uh, some dirt, and this would have been probably maybe used as a bomb shelter just in case they started shelling the beach. They could come down here and hide out and be protected from the enemy bombs. Super, super awesome down here. Just wanna quickly see where these guys would have been escaping to. Believe it or not, it's hot down in those bunkers. Well, I would imagine that back in the day, this entrance might have been a little bit more camouflaged a little bit more protected, and it just ends up in this forest here. They would have been able to run away 
to safety and freedom. <laughs> All right, I think I found one more. And this one doesn't look as well preserved. It's, oh, it's full of water. Actually, down there. Let's try not to get wet and open a scary, rusty gate. So again, it's kind of a abandoned bunker, or this one actually looks like a tower. I'm not sure why the ceiling is jagged like that. Could be something to do with the echo. I'm sure if you're firing machine guns down here, you're not gonna want that noise bouncing around in your head. And as I said, it's almost like this dungeon jail cell. And I can see there is a, an old rebar ladder. Let's, uh, let's go check it out. Okay. Climbing an old abandoned military bunker ladder with one hand. Probably not recommended. Okay, so looks like they've got some cement slabs you could plug up the hole just in case the enemy got too close. And again, we've got these little windows that they would have been able to set up any artillery and, uh, you know, protect, protect Pongu, protect the island. One thing I did want to mention while I'm here, while I'm making this video, is I read an article just a couple of days ago that said Taiwan's military has a fertility problem. Now, we all know Taiwan's trying to bolster its military forces, make the army even stronger, more powerful, but unfortunately they can't do that without the army's most valuable resource, which of course is people, soldiers, and you need children to get soldiers. And right now Taiwan is on pace to tie Korea as the country with the world's lowest birth rate by 2035. So right now there are 162,000 troops, soldiers in Taiwan's military. That is actually 7,000 less than the intended target number, which would be what, 169,000? So hey, you Taiwanese, start having kids. You need the soldiers. Anyway, I just wanted to rant about that for a second. And I think I'm gonna head back down. I'm getting a little bit hungry. Apparently there's a very, very delicious, stinky, tofu shop, Mama Chodofu, that's very close to San Shui. So if you'll just give me a moment, I'm gonna go grab some stinky tofu. I'll see you over there. Ah, fresh air. This stinky tofu is great. Hen Haozi and the, the Lao band, she let us know that actually Ku from Ku's Dream YouTube channel, he actually stopped here when he did that challenge to eat stinky tofu in every single county in Taiwan. So this was one of the famous Chodofu spots on Ku's video. And yeah, I can see why. This is absolutely delicious. <laughs> 